To build an effective change-up robot, we needed to delegate different tasks to different mechanical subsystems. We have intakes for collecting balls, an indexer to bring the balls to the top, a flywheel to toss the balls into the goals, and a filter to eject the balls of the opponent's color. To control these subsystems and driver control and autonomous, we used state machines. State machines are an organizational system that keeps track of the current state of subsystems and controls its behavior accordingly. The intakes, the indexer, and the flywheel all have their own state machine nested within the ball control state machine class that controls the state of all ball manipulators together for a more cohesive end result. One of the difficulties of a 60 second programming run is consistency. Since no system is perfect, the robot will be a little off target after every motion, which can add up over the course of a minute, causing the latter half of the run to be very inconsistent. To fix this, we use odometry, the measure of a robot's position. To do this, we use unpowered wheels on encoders called tracking wheels. By approximating every motion of the robot as a perfect arc, we can calculate the robot's local angular and linear displacement. Adding each of the robot's displacement vectors to its previous known location allows us to determine its absolute position on the field. Because the robot can keep track of its position, it will be able to detect small errors after each motion and account for them in the next motion, making the run much more consistent. Our odometry system uses an inertial sensor that calculates the change of angle, as well as two tracking wheels that are perpendicular to each other to measure both forward and sideways motion. The tracking wheels are specifically designed to stay in contact with the tiles even when the robot tips, so accurate translational information can always be collected. Every 10 milliseconds in a dedicated task, the robot runs odometry calculations to update its position and orientation. For better organization, the odometry is contained in its own static C++ class. We use a very popular feedback controller called PID. The P stands for proportional because it powers the motors in an amount proportional to the error. The D term stands for derivative because the derivative of position is velocity. And the D term slows down the robot if it's going too fast, but speeds it up if it's going too slow. The I term stands for integral and helps the robot move closer to the target at the very end of the motion. Sometimes when the robot is closer to the target, the P and D terms don't apply enough power to move the robot. So the I term starts applying more and more power to get the robot a little closer. Since we use PID in so many places in the code, we have developed our own PID class. So we only need to make a new PID object every time we want to have a new PID controller. Since the drivetrain can move in any direction, we can turn to face any angle while driving in a straight line to our target. We do this by calculating the distance and direction the robot needs to drive to get to the target, then by calculating the power with which you need to drive forward and strafe as components of the translation vector. Finally, we can turn at the same time by simply adding the values calculated by the turn PID. Move the robot across the field, all we need to do is tell it the coordinates of its target and it'll use odometry and PID control to drive there as accurately as possible. Async Action is a system that allows the robot to execute multiple actions at once by passing anonymous functions to be executed at a certain distance away from the target. Using standard C++ vectors, we are able to add as many Async Actions to motion as we'd like. To implement Async Action, we need to tell it how many inches from the target to activate, then pass a lambda function of what actions we wanted to execute at that point, like turning on the intakes 12 inches from the target. Here is our uncut programming skills run that scores 106 points with a stop time of 18 seconds. We plan the route based on the fact that taking ownerships of rows is the most efficient way to score points because changing a blue row to a red row yields 15 points and only requires the robot to score three balls. Thus, we can focus on scoring in just the tops of goals to score five sixths of all available points while only interacting with one third of the balls. This means we don't have to perform as many actions which allows the run to be more consistent. And having to descore only one ball lets us optimize our intakes for picking up balls on the field, which gives our drivetrain more room for error. Thank you for considering us for the VRC Annotated Programming Skills Challenge.